Good morning. Welcome to another Sunday morning in our virtual worship service here from the Fayetteville United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Rhonda. Welcome to our worship service on today, September 13, 2020. Welcome. Please join me now in the prayers of the people. God of the poor and the oppressed, friend and brother of those who suffer injustice and indifference, may your sustaining grace offer hope to those in distress today. May your unconditional love console those who have lost loved ones. May your transforming presence renew us every morning. God of the abandoned and the forgotten, 
As your children, we cry out for your mercy. And as Christians, we long for compassion to reach the marginalized. In times of isolation and fear, may the church offer support and courage. In times of injustice and oppression, may the church fight for those weakened by hatred. In times of uncertainty and despair, may the church proclaim hope. God of those who are not accepted and respected, we pray for a more just society. We pray for a more inclusive church. We pray for families that love and for people who accept everyone as they are. We pray that your mission be accomplished, everyone transformed by love. God of the sick and those mourning, let this time of fear and loss pass. May your consolation reach those who have suffered. May your grace transform laments into smiles. And may your blessings enter broken hearts. Amen. Hear now these words of assurance of pardon. Our God is good. Our God is full of compassion and grace. May we be strengthened in all goodness. For in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and strengthened to do good and be good in the world. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit wherever you are and if you are able to do so, sing along with us, O oh God, our help in ages past, hymn number 117 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Thank you for being a good God. 
Even in those times when we cannot recognize your goodness, it doesn't mean that you are no longer good. Forgive us for those times, O oh God, when we fail to see your goodness in our lives, when we fail to see your goodness in others. We call upon you today to heal us, to help us, to hear us as we offer these, our silent prayers, to you. We rejoice in the fact that we can come to you without an appointment or reservation, that we can open up our hearts, open up our lips, open up our minds and our eyes to see you, to know you, and to be drawn closer to you. And as we do, O oh God, I pray that you will mend our broken hearts and our broken spirits, that you will heal our wounds, that you, O oh God, will transform our minds, that you will continue to provide for our needs and to heal our land. You said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek your face, that you, O oh God, will hear us, and you will heal us and heal our land. We need your healing in so many forms and so many ways, O oh God. As we live through this pandemic, as we live through all the things that are confusing and hard to accept, have mercy and heal us, O oh God. Someone under the sound of my voice needs healing in their body. Someone under the sound of my voice needs healing in their spirit and in their minds and in their soul. Reach out to your hand of compassion, O oh God, and heal like only you can. We thank you for all the ways that you show up and you show your goodness towards us. And because we are grateful, O oh God, we say thank you. Thank you for hearing us and answering us. We pray this prayer now with confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for today is Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town, hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. For he satisfies the thirsty, and the hungry he fills with good things. Some sat in darkness and in gloom, prisoners in misery and in irons, for they had rebelled against the words of God, and spurred the counsel of the Most High. Their hearts were bowed down with hard labor, they fell down with no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and gloom, and broke their bonds asunder. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. For he shatters the doors of bronze, and cuts in two the bars of iron. Some were sick through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word, and healed them, and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. 
and let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. Some went down to the sea in ships doing business on the mighty waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven, they went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their calamity. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad, because they had quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste, because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. He turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water, and there he lets the hungry live, and they establish a town to live in. They sow fields, and plant vineyards, and get a fruitful yield. By his blessing they multiply greatly, and he does not let their cattle decrease. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, trouble, and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and makes them wander in trackless wastes. But he raises up the needy out of distress and makes their families like flocks. The upright see it and are glad, and all wickedness stops its mouth. Let those who are wise give heed to these things and consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Our New Testament reading for today is taken from Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 through 12. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and all peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands, they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to you, our God, forever and ever. Amen. You are worthy to be praised and adored, O Lord. Thank you for your goodness towards us. As is custom here at the Fayetteville United Methodist Church, every Sunday we try to share words of affirmation, words of blessing, words of wisdom. And today the word is simple, taken from the psalm. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endures forever. Declare this with me this morning. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endures forever. The title of my sermon today is Our Good God, and it's based on the psalm, Psalm 107, that was read earlier. Psalm 107 is a strikingly original, well-constructed, beautiful litany of thanksgiving. Even though we are focusing only on a few verses today, I hope that as we explore the content that we can join in with the psalmist and thank the Lord for his steadfast love towards all humanity. The richness of being human lies precisely in our ability to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. To be thankful is the source of so much of our humanity, so much of our goodness, and so much of the beauty of our spirits. 
The Psalms were written for actual use by individuals and congregations. They were intended to be chanted and sung out loud. The portion of the Psalm that we are reflecting on today encourages us to give thanks to the Lord for the Lord is good and the Lord's steadfast love endures forever. The psalmist calls on those who have been redeemed by the Lord to say so, to live so, to be so. The redemption the psalmist is talking about in this context comes directly from the Israelite wilderness experience. These days, this kind of wilderness the psalmist is reflecting on may seem foreign to some here in the United States and other parts of the world. Yet, it is very real for others. The Israelites were wandering in a hot, humid, desert land. Their shoes were worn out. Their lips were parched. Their bellies were empty. Their souls fainted within them. They were bewildered and depressed. They were sick and tired. Their hearts and their spirits were broken and their minds were bruised and confused. They were hungry and they were thirsty. They were frustrated and they were afraid. Does that seem familiar to us these days, those feelings? From getting to know some of you, I have heard stories of survival and resilience in the face of some of life's brutal experiences. I know some of you are in the midst of major changes in your own human experience as well as in your family dynamics and yet you are thriving in the midst of life's difficulties. I can tell you have been through some personal stuff. I know you have a story. We all have a story. You survived something or you survived someone. You are here in the land of the living because you too are being redeemed. I have heard how you've been healed and delivered, how in spite of circumstances you are still here in the land of the living and a part of the family of God. The thing about life is this, as long as you are alive, there will be something or someone who will take you to some kind of wilderness, someone or something that will drain your energy, frustrate your equilibrium, and test your last good nerve. What will you do when those times and those people come around? Will you, like the psalmist, be able to sing a song of praise and thanksgiving? Will you be able to share your story and not be bitter? Can you, have you become a better person because of what you've been through? The Israelites were able. They were able to cry out to the Lord in their time of trouble. What I find intriguing about their cries is that it seemed to have turned into praise. I don't know about you, but I have had some of those moments in my own life where life for me became so overwhelming and so frustrating that I broke down in sobs and tears. I cried because I was hurting. I cried because I was confused and felt used. But I believe with all my heart that the only way to get through tough times is to feel your way through them. So I cried. I pitied myself. I allowed myself to be angry and mad at the person or the situation and then I decided that my negative emotions can coexist with my healthy emotions. So after I allowed myself to feel sad and mad, I decided that I can also let myself feel happy and hopeful and positive and grateful. So I find myself tapping into my own aptitude for gratitude. I begin to count my blessings. I remember that there were many times that I could have been dead, 
buried in a grave somewhere. I remember the times when God showed up just when I was about to give up. I remember the times when I had come to the end of my own resources and God, in God's goodness, showed up and reminded me that indeed, I am your God and I am faithful. God reminded me that with God, all things are possible. The Israelites, these children of God, these people of God, cried out in faith, even though they were troubled in their spirits. And the Lord heard them and delivered them from their distress. God remained an ever-present presence with them. God led them by a straight way until they reached a dwelling place. God satisfied them and filled them with good things. I have to say that I, I believe that their prayers and their, pray, their prayers turned into praise. Their prayers turned into thanksgiving because when God has proven God's self faithful to a people over and over again, it is kind of difficult not to be grateful, hopeful, faithful. And this would not have been the first time that the children of Israel cried out to God. This would not have been the first time that God would have shown up and answered them and delivered them from all of their troubles. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about gratitude. It is essential to our spiritual experience. Gratitude calls us to look beyond ourselves, to the one whose steadfast love remains and endures forever. The good news for those who can and those who cannot easily give thanks to God for salvation in their lives is that ultimately Psalm 107 is not so much about what happened in the past as it is about what we have to look forward to in the future. If in the past God was good, full of loving kindness, gathering the exiles from afar and guiding the people through the desert, then those who are wise know that God will be and will do the same in the future. We've all gotten lost before, right? We've all felt alone before, right? It's part of the human experience. People find themselves wandering in their own constructed desert from which they find it hard to escape. That desert can look like overwhelming fear and doubt and negativity and hopelessness. That desert can be an unhealthy relationship, a confusing situation, a frightening situation, an addiction or a dark night of the soul. Whatever it is, it can be a vicious and endless cycle of fear and doubt and doubt and fear. But on the other hand, God's love is also endless. And the news that God's intent, God's promise is, is to guide us from the waste to the pleasant places in the future, even as God did in the past. That, my friend, is the good news indeed. So here's what I know for sure. Being thankful releases us from fear and doubt. Being thankful releases us from negativity and pessimism and small-mindedness. When we focus on being thankful, on expressing an attitude of gratitude, then our faith becomes stronger. And those who are observing us can see and acknowledge that there's someone greater than us. I also know for sure that the same God who was active as the Redeemer in the history of Israel is the same God active in the lives of each and every one of us in this church and everyone who hears this message and believes. This psalm, Psalm 107, is proof that God's loyalty to the people 
and fidelity to the covenant provoke the instances of divine deliverance celebrated in both the liturgy and the hymn of Psalm 107. Oh, that we here at the Fayetteville United Methodist Church will become known as a community of grateful testimony. Oh, that we here at the Fayetteville United Methodist Church will become a community that makes a difference because we are grateful and thankful and we know it and we live to show it through our wild faith in the God of our salvation. May we ever be able to sing the refrain of this song. God, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. God, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Oh, that we may sing that refrain. God, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. As a congregation full of people who practice giving gratitude to God for our own salvation, may we leave this program today to do God's work. And as a worshiping community, let us sing out our gratitude for the God who may fulfill our external and internal needs. May the psalmist's confession become our affirmation. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. You, O oh God, are a good God. Hallelujah and Amen.
that we have not been together in this same space to perform the ritual of literally uh, putting our, our resources in the offering plate, our pledges and our giving. But nonetheless, you have continued to give. And we are so grateful for your commitment to this church, to the ministry and the mission of God's kingdom here on earth. As a way of expressing our gratitude, let us pray now together this offertory prayer. God of steadfast love, we praise you, for you abundantly provide for every living thing. Thank you for listening when we call to you in times of need. You guide us in your good path, where we will find all you give us. You alone do wonders. You bring transformation, creating new life out of death. Enable us by your spirit to live as people of gratitude who help others to experience your love and grace. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us now as we sing together our hymn of sending, God is so good, and it is found in the faith we sing, hymn number 2056. Please rise in spirit if you are able to and sing along with us. Amen. 